Hey everybody, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. It's Lauren here from Furniture Flipping Teacher. My client reached out to me via Instagram and asked me if I would be willing to basically make these three pieces of furniture match and she wants them to be very timeless. So we are gonna take these pieces that don't really match at all and make them into something that goes more together. I love doing this with furniture because there's no reason that it needs to be the exact match when we can kind of recreate some things and make them look like they were from this, the same set. For all my flippers out there, just a quick pro tip. If you're interested in getting more custom work or having people locally find you, be sure that you are posting on Instagram and Facebook and then tagging your location. That way when people are searching that location, they can also see that you flip furniture and maybe they would be interested. We have tons of people reach out via Instagram. So that is a great little hack, um, even if you don't want to become a full-time content creator. One cool thing about these pieces that I thought was pretty neat was that my client found these all for free. So this is exactly why we wanna take the hardware off before cleaning, because underneath there, there's tends to be a lot of that dust that just accumulates there over time. And it's important that we get that area cleaned up as well. Forgot to say, these three pieces of furniture individually are probably the heaviest pieces that we have ever gotten, like individually. And these are nightstands. I don't know what in the world, why. There's like tons of particle board um, that it's made of and plywood. So these things are so heavy. So I've got them propped up on my hardwood movers. That way I can just easily maneuver them around my garage and I don't have to worry about lifting them very often um, when they're on here because I could just roll them around. So I'll link those down below in the description. Um, but time to clean. I've got my white lightning cleaner in this bottle. It's this granule substance. It's like a TSP soap and it dissolves in water and then you're able to spray it onto the surface of the piece that you're cleaning and then just wipe it down. Now that I've used my white lightning to clean everything, I am just going back with a damp cloth and rinsing everything. Just making sure that all of the cleaner is off of there and then also any last potential um, parts that didn't get completely cleaned. That'll also help everything just get completely cleaned and rinsed off. So this was from rinsing the outsides and then also the darker spots were from cleaning out the inside of the dresser. So definitely an important thing to do to just grab all that dust from inside of there. We are going to switch gears now and make some repairs. So we're starting with my sander and making some repairs because this top to the nightstand and the other nightstand um, is very, very water damaged. And so I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna approach this. So I'll kind of just be winging it. And my first step is just gonna be to see if I can sand any of this texture out. Basically underneath this top layer of what I believe is wood veneer or some type of not wood veneer because usually wood doesn't do this. The water seeps down beneath it and then you can see that it is some type of particle board or plywood and that stuff absorbs water and then things expand. So that's what's happened here. I would say oh, more than 50% of the top here has some sort of water damage. So again, I'm gonna try to sand that smooth and then we will use some Bondo to make any necessary repairs and seal that in there so that the water damage won't occur again even if water is on top of these.
All right, I do believe we've got a pretty flat surface now. I went ahead and used 80 grit on the whole thing. And typically I would not recommend using an 80 grit on veneer. And I would not recommend sanding through the veneer, especially on purpose. Um, but this was a little bit of a different case because I'm not trying to save this top wood layer and with that water damage, it was important to even everything out. I'm going to sand the other one. Again, it is nowhere near as bad as this one was, um, but then once I get that one done, I can repair all of the tops. I am using my Surf Prep sander. It is a three by four, and I've got it connected to my vacuum dust extractor. This just really helps eliminate the dust in the air. It's not just the sander alone, though. It's important that you actually Actually connect it to your dust extractor or shop vac or whatever you've got. I'm going to be applying some Bondo to repair the top of this nightstand first. I use Bondo pretty much on every project. It's really great for the big gouges or dents or filling in hardware holes, um, but basically it's going to be a two-part solution here and it, it hardens when you put the cream hardener substance with the base substance here. It, you can use a, a stir stick like this, or you can use a little putty knife as well. This can kind of help you spread it a little bit better. So like I said, wherever there's plywood visible, that's where I'm gonna start putting the Bondo. So while I've got my Bondo out, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more and get to Bondoing this section. Okay, I'm done with the Bondo filling for at least round one. I know for sure I'm gonna have, have to do for sure one more coat of it because it's a big, deep um, place that I'm filling in. So it'll just dry and harden and then I'll sand it and then I'll do another layer. But I think this up here is dry now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these clamps off and put the Bondo on the top here before this dries out. Full tops are covered in Bondo. So we're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and smooth it out to see how much more we need to apply. All right, they are all smoothed out. That's awesome. I'm not gonna need to do another coat of Bondo on the tops. Again, they weren't big gouges, but it was just important to seal up any of the particle board areas as well as make sure that they were all evened out. So on this one, you can tell that some of them were like a little bit lower in some spots because the Bondo didn't come off when I was just sanding straight on and some of it did. So that means that that would have been even with the top layer. So we just wanted to even it all out. Next up, I am gonna be scuff sanding this big guy as well as the rest of the nightstands where I didn't already sand and uh, repair. I also need to sand down this little area where I made a tiny repair with some Bondo. And the reason I'm scuff sanding is so that we can get rid of any of this glossiness and to really allow that paint and primer to adhere really nicely.
right, everything is sanded, it's scuff sanded, and all that jazz, that part of prep is done. Now that that big mess is cleaned up, it's time to move to the next step, which is sort of going one step farther and making them look as if they came from the same set as I said in the beginning. So the way that we are going to tie them together even more is to add a little detail on the top drawers and I'm going to be adding that detail with a bamboo mat. I've seen this done especially over on Instagram. You can also do it with pole wrap, but this is just a much cheaper method. This mat is from Amazon. You can get tons of different lengths. I believe mine's like 72 inches, which is the longest one. I'll link it down below for you in the description. Uh, but again, it's just a fun way to give a little bit of interest and texture on your pieces of furniture. So I am going to be cutting this down to size to fit the top dress, the top drawer. So the two on the tall one and then one on the nightstands. These drawers are 31 inches long and then about four and a half inches tall. So that means I'm going to need about ten, uh, nine inches and 31 inches, and then I'll cut that in half. So I'm going to cut this using my miter saw because that's the way that I'm going to be able to get the easiest cut. But first I want to go ahead and sort of take the backing off of this so that way it sticks really well and really flat to my drawers here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut into the sections into the four and a half, four and a half, four and a half. Um, I do wanna go ahead and measure these. This is a little tricky because they are like on a curved surface, but it looks to be about three and a half. So two three and a halves and two four and a halves. So that's nine plus seven is 16. Oh, perfect. We'll have plenty for just this one little roll here. I think to keep this together, I'm gonna try like taping it once or twice, just so that it all stays as one big bundle here. Okay, next up, since I've got all these cut down to size with my miter saw, I am gonna go ahead and glue them on here. So some of them splintered a little bit, but I can fix that a little bit later with some wood filler. Um, I'll just make sure to get those off, uh, but I want them to be attached to the drawer before I do that. And I'm gonna do that with some wood glue. I'm gonna go ahead. I decided to leave the backer on there I've seen other people take it off, um, but I'm not, I mean, I don't see a problem with having it on there. So I, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll let you know if it doesn't work or hold up. So now you can see why I didn't fill in these little, this little design on this because I'm gonna be covering it. So the wood glue does need to dry for probably at least 30 minutes before I mess with it at all. Uh, but what I do need to do is go ahead and sand it because I do need it to be scuffed up just as if it were a piece of furniture. So once it dries, that's what I'm gonna do next.
can't believe I'm saying this. And hopefully I don't jinx it, but I, we're almost done with prep here. The last part of the prep before we actually prime is to spray the tops of these with shellac. Shellac is going to be an oil-based, sort of like primer, but this one that I'm choosing is actually a sealer and it's clear. So the sealer is going to help seal in any type of wood tannins, um, which Dixie Belle Boss does as well. It's water-based, but I'm going to use that second after I use the shellac. And the reason I want to use the oil-based shellac first is to seal up the particle board that is popping out on the top. If you remember way back at the very beginning, there was a ton of water damage here and I had to sand down the top all the way to that particle board. If I don't seal that with the shellac, then it will just continue to expand if I put water-based products over the top of it. So that is the reasoning for me to use the shellac first. And then again, like I said, we'll do Dixie Belle Boss second. All right, this stuff dries pretty quickly. So once it's dry, we'll be able to do some boss. I'm gonna pour some gray boss into my sprayer here through my strainer. So that way I don't get any type of chunks down there in my sprayer. I had about half of this can left. Probably won't use it all, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it all in there and then I'll put any excess back here in the jar. I'm gonna be spraying these pieces so that I can just get maximum smoothness on the finish. My client did specifically ask for there to be absolutely no brush stroke marks. So that is a way I can achieve this is by using my sprayer. This is the Wagner Flexio 3000. And I'll link a similar model down below from Amazon. They're a really inexpensive way to get a really smooth finish. So highly recommend the Wagner sprayers. They're also pretty much very beginner friendly as well. I'm gonna go ahead and test out my spray pattern here. That is a major key when you are spraying because every single paint or product you put inside of your spray gun is going to come out differently. So it's important that you test it to make sure that you're not getting splattering or anything that's going wrong with your sprayer. All right, honestly, that's never happened to me before, but we had a great spray pattern right off the bat. I didn't have to do any different adjustments. So let's go ahead and spray some boss. is on so once that dries we'll do a little bit of just looking over the pieces making sure that everything is smooth and then we will paint them the color that we are going to paint them <laughs> It is the next day and after that primer dried, I knew that I was gonna be able to see any um, leftover imperfections, especially on the tops here where I sanded a whole bunch. And I am seeing some textured spots and some spots where you can still basically tell that the particle board is popping through as well as some of the wood grain. So I am gonna do one, hopefully last round of Bondo here so that I can just get a super smooth finish. Yeah, my Bondo hardened before I was able to use it all the way, the part that I made. So 
made a little too much, I guess, before it could harden. That's why I tell you guys all the time, if you don't want to waste product, just do really small batches. It stinks to make it over and over and over again, but again, I'm wasting a lot of Bondo because it hardens so quickly. Something that I do in between coats of primer and paint is I look over the surface that I have primed or painted and I just look for any imperfections to see if anything needs to be wood filled again or if I can just go straight into my next step. So you'll see a lot of wood grain going on here, but because I'm going to be painting these black, I really don't think that it's an issue on the fronts of the drawers. The reason I wanted to fill the tops is because I want those to be as smooth as can be. But the one thing that I am a little bit unsure about is the part where I filled the Bondo where there was that little indent in the drawers. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna really be able to tell 100% if I'm still gonna be able to see those marks until I get that black, that black paint on there. So at this point, I am good with how the drawers are looking right now and once I get that first coat of black on, I'll decide from there if I need to do another coat of Bondo or if I'm good to just leave the black as is and go ahead and do a second coat. All right, time to get my sprayer filled. We are gonna be painting with Dixie Belle's Silk Mineral Paint in the color Anchor. This is probably my go-to black paint. I love the finish on it. It is a true black and they are actually now selling them in the 32 ounces versus just the 16. So you get a little bit more bang for your buck when you purchase the larger quantities. And they have these not in all of the colors, but mostly in the ones that are like uh, the black and the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and strain it just like I did with my primer. Okay, I got it all filled up here. And one of the reasons why I really like the Wagner sprayers is because the nozzle portion of this is actually removable and you can get new nozzles to be able to use different products in each one. So here I've got my primer that I used yesterday and then a little bit today, but instead of having to go clean this one all out, and then put paint in it. I've just got another nozzle and I have my paint in there and I can just attach that and we're ready to go. So that way cleanup happens all at once later on and different nozzles for different ones. I also like to keep a different nozzle for my top coats. That way the clear only goes through the top coat or only goes through one nozzle. It's time for coat number two. We kind of moved into the garage because it's super, super windy out today. And it's kind of blowing the paint everywhere, but also blowing a lot of things onto the surface and then drying when the wet paint. Uh, so we want to try and avoid that at all costs. I also went ahead and sanded smooth the first coat just with a very fine piece of sandpaper um, on my orbital sander. And so, like I said, we're ready for coat number two. I'm still going to test out my spray pattern once more to make sure we're all good to go. And then I'll be doing second coat on everything.
second coat is finished. So that is gonna dry, dry, dry overnight. And then we'll come back and check everything out in the morning. The second coat is dry, so we've got these flipped over so I can go ahead and remove this green tape to reveal the legs again. Sometimes when you're spraying furniture and there's sort of like an underside of your furniture, it may miss a little bit because it's a really difficult angle to get. So it's important to lay it down on its back and just see if there's any areas where maybe that need to get touched up. So as you can see, not a lot of paint got right here. So I am just going to take my paintbrush and a little bit of paint and sort of touch up in those areas. I have some new hardware that I'm gonna be attaching to these nightstands and dresser. So we've got a six and a quarter inch pole here that I'm gonna put on the two bottom drawers of the nightstands. And then I grabbed these really neat brass knobs on Amazon pretty cheap too and it came in a pack of 10 and i am going to be putting two of these on the top drawer right here so for the handles here i like to use my hardware jig because I know for sure that if I use this and position it correctly the first time, I don't have to reposition it any other times throughout the time when I'm using um, the same measurements for each handle. So I love using this jig. It's about $15 on Amazon and it is totally worth the money to not have to worry about what, are you getting level um, holes when you're re-drilling hardware holes. So definitely a great little tool to have on hand and you can even put it to the desired height by moving this little guy up or down depending on how high or like if you want in the middle of the drawer toward the top of the drawer toward the bottom of the drawer and then i've already got these positioned it happened to be that the last hardware i used actually was the same measurement so didn't have to move that that's also always a plus Now that I've got this dresser assembled as well, there's just one more little thing that I wanted to do to tie in the nightstands that much more. Since these legs have some gold on them, um, I talked with my client and she also would like to put a little bit of gold on the feet of the bigger dresser as well. So not on the back two because those aren't, those are just like square legs and it probably wouldn't look the best. And so I'm just going to do the very bottom portion of these feet of the legs so that that can just tie right in. I'm using my gold gilding wax from Dixie Belle and this does not need any type of top coat because once it dries it'll be on there for good and it is an oil-based product um, so that is something to keep in mind if you don't want to get it on your hands it'll kind of stain them for just a little while um, but that's one reason it doesn't need a top coat because it'll cure all on its own. We're done. I'm so excited. It came a long way since the beginning where they didn't match at all and now they are actually looking somewhat like a set. You can obviously still tell that they aren't made the same way. There's completely different styles, but because of the color matching, the hardware matching, and even the little details on the legs, they look a lot more like a set than they did at first. We always offer that we will go pick up the furniture and deliver it back to their house, or they can do it themselves. If it is in our area, we charge $50 per way, and she did go ahead and invest in that delivery and pick up so we already picked it up and we did the $50 and then plus $50 when we go and deliver it. So that equals us another $100. We're not going to be using $100 worth of gas or anything like that, but I think we have decided we're gonna take two cars out there to deliver just so that nothing gets um, wrecked in the drive over there. So again, taking into consideration your time and the just, the kind of stress of getting them over there in one piece and having to worry about them for that much longer. Oh, that looks so good. Oh. Perfect.
much. Oh, I love this. Delivered. Check. At the end of the day, I just want to continue to reiterate to you guys that you don't have to go out and buy new furniture and neither do the people around you. So offer up your services, continue to flip that furniture and sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, all of those links are down below in the description and I'll see you on the flip side.